stretching out across some of the most beautiful and desolate terrain in Australia. The Balera to Mount Isa pipeline will provide clean, reliable and competitive natural gas for the Mica Creek power station. The power station, originally coal-fired, is being converted to natural gas, initially to generate electricity for the Mount Isa mining operations and the Ernest Henry mine. The $180 million pipeline project is 70% owned and operated by AGL in joint venture with the Southwest Queensland gas producers. In a winning combination, a partnering alliance was established between AGL and construction contractor McConnell Dow, both partners agreeing that their joint experience and expertise contributed significantly to the success of the project. Located in Queensland's far western region, the 840 kilometre pipeline will carry gas from the Balera processing facility across the flood-prone Cooper Basin and between two national parks to the Mica Creek power station at Mount Isa. The pipeline route had been designed to avoid sensitive environmental and cultural heritage areas as well as reflect the interests of local pastoralists and traditional landowners who all played a vital role in the final selection of the pipeline route. Traditional owners, appointed as monitors, worked closely with the project's archaeologist to evaluate the significance of cultural heritage sites along the route. Protected areas were marked with yellow flagging in accordance with the project's cultural heritage management plan. Environmental considerations, especially regarding the flora and fauna of the area, were vitally important. The flat, treeless area around Davenport Downs, some 380 kilometres from Balera, is home to the bilby, one of Australia's most rare and endangered species. Joining forces with local graziers and state government bilby experts, AGL set in place a bilby management plan. The bilby colonies were mapped and the pipeline zigzagged for over 40 kilometers to avoid interfering with the habitat. While more demanding from a construction point of view, the zigzagging of the route was also used to avoid culturally sensitive areas and sustain the fragile riparian canopy of vegetation and wildlife at river crossings. In total weight, 47,000 tonnes of pipe was used on the Balera to Mount Isa pipeline. Manufactured by tube makers of Australia in joint venture with Japanese-owned Sumitomo Australia, the 324mm or 12-inch high-grade steel pipe was protectively coated with high-density yellow polyethylene, then railed to strategically placed stockpiles before being loaded onto trucks for the long journey to the right-of-way. Delayed by unexpected heavy rains which flooded the Cooper Basin, the pipeline crews were forced to remobilize at Mount Isa, where construction finally commenced in April 1997. As the clear and grade operation advanced, it was carefully monitored by traditional owners of the United Cultural Management Committee, an association of 13 groups in the north, and by traditional owners the Goulburry Land Council in the south. Precious topsoil was moved to the side for later use in restoring the landscape after construction had been completed. Stringing crews worked tirelessly in the hot Queensland sun, the long kilometres of methodically placed pipe reaching out for the horizon in a bright yellow chain. Working in conditions of exhausting heat and bull dust, the highly skilled welding crews forged ahead joining up to 428 butts over 7.7 .7 kilometers of pipe a day, a record-breaking effort. Regardless of the demanding conditions, the experienced welding teams operated with professional precision, completing 46,600 welded joints over 109 days of construction. 
Quality control was paramount throughout the construction process. Sample welds were x-rayed by a remote controlled x-ray crawler. After the x-rays had been inspected and approved, the surface of the pipe welds was grit blasted, coated with a primer and wrapped with two layers of coating tape to protect the metal joint from corrosion after the pipe was buried in the ground. Cleveland bucket wheel trenches were used to excavate long sections of trench to a safe depth of up to 1.8 meters. While passage through particularly hard rock sections required excavation with hydraulic hammers and excavators, McConnelldale's impressive 100-ton Vermeer rock trencher was used to carve through long stretches of rock and hard soil. Stone damage to the coating remained an ongoing concern, so padding machines were used to sift the excavated trench soil to provide a rock-free cushion on the bed of the trench. Men and machines operated in synchrony on the delicate operation of lowering the pipes into the trench. The heavy pipe strings were lifted like a length of hose, and skilled teamwork was needed to ensure that the pipe's protective coating was not damaged during the crucial lowering in process. An arc of sifted soil was used to cover the pipe before bulldozers and graders set to work to backfill the trench. In soft soil conditions, bulldozers and graders alone completed the backfilling operation. Finally, the previously stored topsoil was used to regrade and resurface the entire pipeline route to its original profile, so that with the first rains, the land will return to its natural beauty. Queensland's rugged west, the land of Banjo Patterson, Burke and Wills, and the legendary Cobb and Co. Remote and isolated country where safety procedures are always taken seriously. For example, the Cooper Basin is home to a variety of snakes, many of them poisonous. Frequently, they would fall into the pipe trench or lie motionless beside it, camouflaged in the red dust. So, as part of regular toolbox safety and training meetings, all personnel received specific in-depth instruction on emergency first aid treatment for snake bite from the base camp's resident nurse. To ensure a very high standard of safety and health, the camp was equipped with a modern medical center housing a fully equipped surgery. And every day, a four-wheel drive ambulance patrolled the right-of-way construction area. October, the main pipeline had been completed in record time and ahead of schedule. Work was then concentrated on the above ground scraper and valve stations and AGL's Mica Creek gas meter station. By April 1998, the 840 kilometer Belira to Mount Isa natural gas pipeline was complete. A significant win for the environment by reducing greenhouse gas emissions in Mount Isa. An economic win for the people of Queensland through a $2 billion increase in project development. And a tribute to all involved in bringing energy to the Northwest.